Hello friends, this video on metal and non-metal part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 10. So till now we have done reaction of metal with something, reaction of non-metal with something. We have done reaction of metal with metal also, but we have not done reaction of metal with non-metal. What will happen if you react metal with non-metal? Let's see. So when a metal and non-metal react, the transfer of electron takes place from metal to non-metal. Why? Because this guy, if you see, metal is ready to give electron. Metal wants to give electron. Right? And non-metal always wants to take this electron. So if you see this electron is common here. Metal always wants to give this electron and non-metal always wants to take this. For example, sodium will try to give electron to become Na plus and chlorine will try to take that electron to become Cl minus. And these are the stable state of sodium and chlorine. And then they will be form a compound called NaCl. Correct? So why they do like this? We'll explain maybe in the next two chapters where we'll explain the atomic structure and the valence electron, the shells, where we'll tell why this metal has a tendency to lose electron and non-metals has a tendency to gain electrons. So we'll explain maybe in the next chapter. Next chapters, yeah. The compound formed in this manner by the transfer of electron, please know the transfer of electron, there is no sharing, this transfer of electron from metal non metal are called ionic compounds or electrovalent compounds. Both are same. They are ionic or electrovalent compounds where actually the transfer of electron happens and there is a bonding that is created. Ionic compounds have strong electrostatic force of attraction between the positive and negative. They are very strong force and that's why they have high melting and boiling fine. We will we'll explain that also. Ionic compounds have very strong the uh, attraction between them, the positive and negative ions. So before we uh, understand the ionic uh, thing, we'll, we'll explain uh, how the NaCl is formed. Let's understand the cell thing. So if you see this uh, metals, we are more interested in suppose sodium. Sodium has atomic number 11. That means it has this K element cell. We have learned this a very brief in this previous classes and we will learn more detail in the next class but uh, just understand this 11 so it has 2, 8, 1 as the uh, number of electrons in the cell the K shell will have 2, L will have 8, M will have 1 this M is 1 it, it see generally 8 or 0 is the uh, stable state right it should the formula is or the funda is the outermost outermost shell should be filled to be stable okay that is the funda of all the reaction the outermost shell should be filled to be stable so in this case if you see m has the maximum quantity of 8 l has the maximum quantity of 8 k has 2 now in this case this guy also for sodium to become stable, it has to either get 7 electron because the 8 is the requirement or you lose this guy also. You lose this guy, this shell is gone. The next cell is this, there's already 8. So, sodium has two options, either to get 7 electron or to lose 1 electron. Gaining 7 electron is difficult, this world is very cruel, nobody will give 7 electron to you. Why will other elements. See the elements behave just like human beings, right? So sodium knows that gaining seven electron for him is very, very difficult. Nobody will give him seven electrons. But losing one electron is easy for him because anyway he is losing, he can lose that, right? So for you to lose thing is easy to gain, but to gain is difficult. For example, money. So for you to spend money in a shop or in a mall is easier than to earn money. Same thing is the electron. Electron is like money for these atoms. But Sodium knows that if he can just lose one extra money which he has because one, one extra money is causing him discomfort, is not making him stable, he's not, he's not getting sleep, maybe sodium is not getting sleep because of the one extra electron, it will give the electron because he, he has to either get seven extra electron to, to get the complete stability in life or has to lose one extra electron to get stability in life. So better it will prefer, okay, let me lose the extra electron and then you will see sodium has the tendency of 
losing one extra electron. But if you see elements like chlorine, if you see chlorine, chlorine has seven elements in the outermost cell. So it has two options. Either to give seven to give seven electrons to someone or to gain one electron from someone. Chlorine will not like to give seven because it's almost done, almost he has filled the outermost just in need of one electron, right? One electron that means it makes come it, it will uh, be complete, it will be happy in life. And it will not give the seven electron which he has earned over a period of time. So what it will do is it will try to get one electron from somewhere. The moment sodium comes and sodium is ready to give one electron and sodium becomes Na+, plus, this guy chlorine will take this electron. Chlorine will take this electron and will become Cl-. And this guy is stable. This guy is stable now. This guy is a stable state, right? These guys are stable. Sodium is happy with uh, giving one electron. It is not having a, by giving one electron, it is not having this. It's, the outermost cell will have eight now. It is happy. Chlorine will get eight. It will be happy. So that, that's the reason why the reaction happens. We'll study more in detail when we study the periodic table. Where we'll study why uh, sodium or why, you know, what um, potassium, calcium, why things are, which one is more reactive, even if they have one one elements in the outermost cell so those kind of things will study in the next class right and if you see argon right this guy or neon helium the outermost cells are all complete they are this guy needs two he has two elements electrons this guy needs eight electrons this guy has eight this guy argon needs eight electrons this guy has eight and that's why they are pretty stable in life they have they have they have reached the calm state they are called saint you can see that saint right they they have stable in life they don't react even if you uh, pass the SCL or hydrochloric acid or anything they won't react they are reactless they are stable in life they don't they don't care they don't react but these metals like sodium and all since they have only one extra they just lose it to become stable this guy chlorine they have only they need only one they react more sulfur it needs two extra it react little less phosphorus needs three extra it reacts even less right and if you see in the case of carbon as I told carbon has four in the outermost cell so carbon can either get four or can take four it's 50 50 sometimes carbon take four sometimes carbon so that's why the carbon forms covalent uh, a different kind of bond called covalent bond because it will it is neither willing to give four electron and nobody is giving to him uh, nobody is willing to give him four electrons right because he's saying you know I have got four I may get four so the carbon is a dicey state and that's why carbon has a unique property. We'll learn that in the next chapter where we'll discuss more about carbons. But this is how the uh, the importance of electron cell shell in determining the reactivity of a metal and non-metal. Hope you understand this part why sodium is ready to give electron and chlorine is ready to take electron. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.